why is this so wide angled? Hey, how's it going guys? Ricky Summer here. Today I've come back in time to talk about folders and buses in Reaper. Cue the intro. All right, this video is courtesy of Charlie Lloyd, who asked in the comments of last week's mixing video about buses and folders, specifically, like just basically what they are and when to use them, when not to use them. I thought that was a great idea. That's a great question. I'd love to answer it because like Charlie said, there's a lot of information like going deep into the specifics of mixing and, and using Reaper or insert whatever door you use here. But there's not a lot of information on like the very super basics of it, right? Uh, so that's what we're going to cover today. After watching this video, if you find you want more information, I recommend you head on over to Reaper Mania with Kenny Joya. You know the guy who does Reaper tutorials and he speaks like this. They're great. They're great videos, really simple to follow. He doesn't go too fast and there's lots of information in there. I highly recommend that channel. Okay, let's jump into it. All right, so we're starting off with a clean session here. I haven't touched anything. We're going to create two instrument tracks. So right click, insert virtual instrument on new track. And I am going to throw in uh, SQ8L and I'm going to change the preset to Moog lead. And let's have a play. All right, so now I'm going to duplicate that and we'll call this inst1 and inst2. All right, so let's start off with inst1. We're going to put this in a folder. So I'm gonna right click, insert new track, or you can press control T. I'm gonna drag that above instrument one. Then I'm going to click and hold on instrument one and drag that up until that blue bar snaps into place. And now we have a folder. So I'll rename this to folder so it's not confusing. Now I'm gonna play the instrument again. Now you might notice two things here. Firstly, you can see there's signal coming through the folder track. And secondly, it's also a lot quieter than it was outside of the folder. The reason for that is because it's routing through the folder. The folder is like the ultimate gatekeeper between what is in the folder and the master mix. Ooh, that was my stomach. <laughs> I better eat something. So the reason the instrument is now quieter is because I have my Reaper set up to automatically set the volume of new tracks to minus 10 dB. This is so I've got headroom while I'm mixing. And we can go into this later in like a how I set up my session sort of video, if you guys are interested. Uh, but it's essentially so that I'm not wrestling with like peaking and things distorting as more instruments flood the mix and it just gets louder. So because I've got it set to default all my new tracks to minus 10 dB, that includes that folder. So you've got the regular instrument track and then that volume is lowered again as it goes through the folder. So if I double click the fader of the folder so that that is now zero dB, that's default, normal. You'll notice it's no longer quiet. So if I drag that instrument out of the folder and we'll listen to it again, and then back into the folder, it's the same volume, isn't it? Right? So if you don't touch anything, it's, it's not going to sound any different. All you're doing is organizing instruments. And that is one use for the folder. It's just simply, I have a bunch of instruments. These belong in a group for thematic reasons or whatever. And I just want to organize them so that visually things make sense. That's one use for a folder. Another use is, remember, all the signal coming from the instrument goes through the folder. Nothing bypasses it. Everything goes through. It's the gatekeeper. So that means I can, I can do a whole bunch of shit with this folder to affect the instruments inside it. For one, I can mute it. So you can see there's signal coming from the instrument, but it's not getting through the folder, right? Again, like you saw before, I can adjust the volume, make it louder, make it quieter, 
you can barely hear it now. And that'll affect everything in that folder. So if I duplicate the instrument, and just so you can sort of, you can hear what's going on, I'm gonna change that to instant strings. Right? Now I'm gonna mute, you hear nothing. I'm gonna make it quieter. See, both of those instruments in the folder are affected by whatever I do to the folder. Let me get rid of that second instrument there. I don't want instant strings anymore. So something else we can do is put effects on there. So let's say reverb. So I'll pull up my reverb plugin, put on the 80s plate preset, because that's basically all I use. <laughs> now we've got reverb. You know, I can put another plugin on there, something else I use all the time, Super VHS. Bring up the warmth, the drift a little bit, a little bit of wash, the shape. There you go, right? So we then get rid of those. I'm just bypassing the effects and it's back to normal. Effects back on. There we go. So if you've got a bunch of instruments that you want to affect in the same way, you want them all to have the same reverb or the same EQ, the same compressor, you can use a folder. You just click and drag them into the folder. You put the effects on the folder and then you only have to set the effects once. You don't have to mess around with like copying them into other tracks like that. Then you have to keep track of what all the settings are. So if you, if you change something in one, you have to go to all the tracks and change them again in the exact same way in all the other tracks. And some of these plugins like Super VHS doesn't have presets. You know, so you'll be sitting there going, oh, how much drift was it? And you're just trying to eyeball it. That's super tedious. Furthermore, the more instances of, of an effect of a, a plugin, a VST you have, the more system resources you, you're using. So using folders in this way to apply the same effect to a whole bunch of different instruments is also a lot less taxing on your system. You're saving system resources. Folders are great for organization because they're inherently very visual you can see that this instrument is inside that folder. So I'm just gonna collapse that folder. Another great use for folders. You can just save space like that. All right, now let's move on to buses. So I'm going to create a new track again, or Control T. And this time, just gonna get that out of the folder there. This time, it doesn't matter where we put it. I can put that up there if I want. But just for the sake of ease and, and understanding, we're gonna slip it underneath the instrument that we're gonna bus to. So I'm gonna name this simply bus. Okay, so now I'm going to route instrument two through the bus. And I can do that in two ways. I can click down here where it says route and I can send it to the bus. I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna show you an easier way. I'm going to click and drag that button over to the bus. Does the exact same thing. And then it brings up this little window to show us, you know, well, how much volume do you want to send to the bus? So I'm just going to set that to normal. Okay, so now you can see we've got signal going to the bus. All right, so with buses, you've got a couple of different options. Remember with the folder, the folder acts as the gatekeeper. So whatever is in the folder has to come out through the folder. So if you do anything to the folder, it affects everything inside of it. But with the bus, we've got a couple of different options. We've got post fader, pre fader, pre effects. So post fader is after the fader, after the volume control. Pre fader is before the volume control. And then we've got pre effects. So let me try and demonstrate the differences here. If we go to post fader and then just pull the fader on the instrument down, you can't hear anything. It's sending the signal through the whole track through the volume control and then to the bus. So we've got nothing. Let's bring that back. And we're back to normal. Now let's change that to pre-fader. And I'm going to pull the fader right down. There you go. So the sound is being routed to the bus before it even reaches the volume control. And then we've got pre-effects. Now, as I play that, this one's gonna be a little bit more complicated to, to actually see what's going on, but I'll play. And you'll notice that we've got signal, we've got sound coming out of instrument two, but nothing's happening on the bus. 
You know, we haven't got that, the red bar coming up. There's, there's no sound coming through the bus. That's because pre-FX sends the signal before the effects. But our instrument, the very thing that is making sound, because it's a software instrument, is an effect. So it's actually got nothing to send. It's like sending MIDI information. But that's it. So I can mute the bus. It's not going to sound any different. So where's that sound coming from? It's coming from the instrument track itself. And this is one of the key differences between buses and folders. Folders, all the sound, and I've said this a million times in this video, but all the sound routes through the folder. Nothing bypasses, nothing gets through. But with a bus, it sends the signal to the bus, but it doesn't stop the signal coming out of the original track. Now I can change that. We go back into the routing settings here and I'll turn off master send, which means that instrument two will not send sound to the master track. And now if I play, you can hear it, it's quiet. It's going to the bus. I'm gonna raise the volume on the bus. There you go. I know it's complicated, but let me try to sum it up for you. So a bus will receive signal from a track or from multiple tracks if you want, but it will not cut off the signal in the original tracks. So instrument two will by default still send audio to the main mix. That's clean audio. That's unaffected by whatever the bus is doing. Plus it'll send whatever's going through the bus as well. And as you can see, we can change that behavior if we just want audio coming out of the bus, or we can re-click master send. And then we've got both the clean signal from instrument two and the signal coming from the bus going to the fader. All right, that's the gist of buses. So why would you use buses? All right, listen, <laughs> buses are good for effects in the same way that folders are. So if you want, like this, the simplest way to use it, in my opinion, is for reverb. And that's mostly how I use buses. So let me insert a track here. We'll slap on some reverb and we are good to go. There you go. Now we've got reverb coming out of the bus. Let me just set that back down to there. So this gets a little bit tricky because we've got more fine control over it, which isn't a bad thing. Let me show you how this works. So I'm gonna duplicate instrument two and we're gonna call that instrument three. So now we're, we've got two instruments playing and they're both going through the bus. Now, if we go down to the routing, in fact, you know what? Let's go to the routing of the bus and we can see everything that's being sent to it. So like this, you've got one reverb plugin doing all the heavy lifting for everything being sent to it. Why is this good? Like I said before, just like with the folder, see they're, they're very similar, they just have a couple of subtle differences. It's the same reason you would, you would put reverb on a folder to apply reverb to a bunch of different tracks, to save system resources so you're not taxing your computer too much maybe you know, maybe you're just doing it on a laptop you know you don't want to load up a laptop with like a million reverb plugins it'll freak out even if you've got a powerful system like you know why use more processing power than you need to plus it makes it a lot easier to manage instead of having to manage and fine tune and keep track of like six to ten different uh instances of a reverb plugin you've only got one with a bunch of tracks going to that one but hold on, Rick, you might be asking. Maybe I don't want the exact same amount of reverb in every one of my tracks. This is why you use a bus. With a folder, you can't control that. It is what it is. Everything goes through the folder, nothing bypasses. You have no fine control. But with a bus, you do have control of how much signal is going through the bus. And that's what we have right here. We've got instrument two, instrument three. So if I wanna add more reverb to instrument two and less to instrument three, I can do that. It's just as simple as adjusting the faders to indicate how much 
or how little signal is going to the bus. So if I then show you instrument two, oof, spacey, that's a lot of reverb. And instrument three, it's not as much reverb, right? See, it, it works. <laughs> so that is why you would use a bus. In very simple terms, there are other reasons to use a bus or busing too. You don't have to just have a dedicated, this is my reverb bus, this is my effects bus, and that's all it does. For example, if I bring up my kick and snare template, which is something we can talk about in another video if you're interested in templates and setting up a session, uh, I do have some things to say about how I set up my Reaper session ready for recording and, and, and writing. Uh, we can talk about that another day. So we've got kick and snare here. Let's also add in, again, we'll throw in SQ8L and we'll just use the uh, mono bass preset and we'll call that bass and we'll put that up there. All right, so I wanna set up some side chain compression. So I'm just gonna put in, nope, that's the snare, but that's all right, kick. I'm gonna loop that. Great, now let's put in a little bit of bass. And you know what? I'm gonna just say so that's playing constantly. We're gonna put an arpeggiator on that. All right, so the issue with that is the kick drum might get lost in the soup of the bass. Have a listen. It's muddy. I mean, it's it's not a great sounding bass to begin with the way I've set it up, but just, just for the sake, you know what? Let's slow it down. There we go. There we go. That's a, a little bit better. So, you know what? Let's throw in a snare as well. Why not? There we go. Okay. So in order to make room for the bass, we're going to do something called side chain compression. So I'm going to go over to my bass track. I'm going to throw on a, a compressor, a bus comp here, and then I'm going to drag the kick into the compressor, into the plugin itself. I'm gonna turn on sidechain and boost that up a little bit. So notice this ticks up as the kick plays. If I solo the bass, Let me boost that up to the extreme so you can hear it. See how it gets quieter when the kick is meant to play? That's side chaining. So what's happening here is I've told this compressor plugin to reduce the volume of the bass whenever the kick plays. And I can, I can do this with, with anything. Like I, I can drag in the, uh, the snare, for example. Let's see what happens then. See? That's actually not bad. That sounds kind of cool. It's, it's nice. <laughs> so there you go. There's another use for busing without it actually being a bus. Because in this case, the bass track itself is what you're busing to, but you would not necessarily call it a bus. That being said, what I do tend to do in my own mixes is I create a bass bus folder that I put the bus into, and then that is what has the compressor effect on it. Yeah. There you go. All right, so that's, as far as I'm concerned, the basics. There are other techniques like parallel compression and whatnot, but uh, listen, let's not get into that. This is just the, the most common use for folders and buses in my own music. This is how I work. If you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the comments down below. I know this is, especially with buses in particular, this is a little bit of a, a, a sticky topic. It's, it's quite dense and there's a lot you can do with it. 
um, fiddling around with a with a minutiae of, of sends and receives and whatnot and post fader and pre fader and, and and all that nonsense. There's a lot in there, uh, but I hope you got the gist of it. There's definitely more we could delve into here. And like I said, if you want to go deeper into this topic, I'm sure you'll be able to find something on uh, Reaper Mania with Kenny Joya. For the moment, guys, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to gently caress that like button, taste the game, be excellent to each other, and I'll see you next time. Ricky Summer. These are the wrong glasses. Ricky's, Ri Ricky Summer. Out.